Daz. I've got in front of me a, is it Jupiter? Or Jupiter? I can never pronounce this. Multi band receiver, a scanner. It's model MVT8000. Um, belongs to an amateur radio friend of mine. Um, he says the memory isn't holding. And I'm led to believe that this has one of these um, dual layer uh, memory backup capacitors in it. So uh, I'm going to have a look to see uh, where that's located and uh, attempt to change it. I haven't changed one of these uh, uh, memory backup capacitors um, since I uh, owned a video recorder. So uh, a little while since I've seen one. So the front panel has broken but um, I'm led to believe it's these two screws here. Um, and also the four underneath to gain access, so I'll have a go at that. Well, here we are inside the scanner, as expected. A load of tuned circuits, filters, probably a phase lock loop, and here is the memory backup capacitor, I suspect. That does look like what I remember they look like, so here it is there. It might be interesting to power up and just see uh, what happens with the uh, uh, memory, uh, the, the backup capacitor to see if it uh, charges up. Well, I've took the uh, other four screws off the bottom and the side panels have come off and there's also an earth point here so I'll just have a look at this capacitor and see if there's anything in it. Just a few, about 100 millivolts. Okay, try powering it up. Well, there's 5.5 volts straight across the capacitor without the power switched on on the on off switch, so obviously that is maintained all the time. Interestingly, it came up almost immediately, so that suggests to me I haven't got a circuit diagram that uh, there's no current limiting on that, so uh, just the internal resistance of it. So it'll be interesting to see if it stay, uh, stays charged after I've left it on for a few minutes. One thing I noted was this capacitor between the screen cover on the front of the unit and to this earth position here. So definitely had to remember to unscrew that, obviously you can damage the ceramic capacitor. Alright, the unit's been turned on for five minutes, which is long enough for it to acquire some charge. It won't be a full charge, but let's just see what happens when we knock the power off. Hmm, that is falling pretty quick. So either there's no capacitance in this capacitor or the microprocessor is drawing rather a lot of power. So it looks like the two screws here that hold the heat sink, because that appears to be fixed to the, yeah, PCB. Imagine all the screws around here, all these connectors got to come off. Looks like there's an aerial connector and also a connector for these because these definitely look thick but I think the air earphone will probably need to be unscrewed and hopefully then I can uh, access the circuit board ah oh, there we go so I don't have to, have to undo anything the air earphone jack was on the connector as well there we go oh a nice bit of surface mount under there as well all hidden away So looking at the capacitor it looks like 5.5 at 0.22 farads and there also looks like evidence of corrosion here so I think I'll clean the board up. Right so I've got it separate out of the uh, radio now so I've got a resistor in series with it this time so another five minutes at least. Oh yeah very rapid discharge hmm okay I'd say um, that's probably not got much electrolyte in it this appears to be connected directly via a diode across the 6 volt regulator and you think well if something goes wrong it's gonna get a bit warm 
um, with no current limiting resistor. Don't know if one can be fitted without the circuit diagram. I'm not sure what's downstream of it and how how it's been done. So I'm not even sure you could. Anyway, that's definitely had it. Um, here's some other wet capacitors I have. The wet type uh, double layer capacitors. Unfortunately, none of them are really suitable. Um, this large one certainly won't fit. Um, that is the correct uh, capacitance, but uh, it's interesting the size difference between these two. Very interesting. The only time I've used one of these is in actually one of my Nixie clocks, which uses CMOS logic. And I've got it via a resistor and a, a diode on the supply line. And what it does is it holds the time, because CMOS logic doesn't use much current. And so this just give, just holds the logic up for a few minutes if there's just a brief power cut. And it's actually worked well over the last few years. Um, this has done a very good job. I must admit, these were charged about five days ago, so yeah, they're still holding a charge. They're in good condition. These uh, double layer capacitors do have quite a high leakage current, so they will run themselves down. These ones are only 0.047 farad, only I say. It, these are quite amazing technology to get that amount of capacitance in such a small case. And they're quite complicated when I looked. A lot of people call these super capacitors, but they've got internal resistances of tens of ohms. So I don't think they're as good as a proper super capacitor that you get these days. I also found this one farad one, but I haven't charged it up properly. Yeah, it's gone down to 3.3, so that's interesting. At the moment, um, it's very difficult to get hold of these uh, capacitors. Everywhere I've looked seems to be out of stock at the moment, so I might have to do a botch. But I did find some um, on an auction site, but I don't know how good they're going to be, to be honest. Um, but it's it's been a pain. I work in the electronics industry, and uh, you know we're in September 22 now, and it's still difficult to get components. Um, there still seems to be shortages. See if I can get a maximum current reading here. Two hundred and thirty six milliamps. Three hundred and eighty eight on that one. But it is a one farad and that's point two, so it's gonna have a lower internal resistance. That's lasting longer than I thought. I got some uh, capacitors that fitted. I couldn't get them from the usual suppliers. Um, I've left them charged for four days now. And they're holding a charge. Now, when I first got them, I only gave them about half an hour. And the, they were simply discharging quite quickly. Now whether it's because of the high internal resistance or whether it's because um, they're new, I'm not sure. And whether they have to polarise or something. This, These ones have been charged 10 days ago and I'm quite surprised they're still holding a charge. Let's see what the short circuit current of is this one. Briefly 100 milliamps, that's not too bad. These ones, a lot less. So I assume this one's the better performer. I'm not sure what make it is. It could be a Panasonic, but I'm not sure. JGNE, I'm not sure. Oh well, we'll see. I've managed to uh, clean the holes out okay. Apparently these capacitors don't like a long soldering process, so uh, best make sure that they're clear. I'm putting the uh, capacitor on the discharge, so I discharge it before I put it in. It takes a little while because of the internal resistance again. Putting it back together, I left it overnight. Yeah, still got 5.2 volts there, so uh, yeah, that uh, capacitor's holding the charge. And indeed, I guess if I turn the set on, 
Yeah, it's holding the uh, frequency I'd put in. Good. Yeah, about 5.2 when the set's on. It rises to 5.5 when it isn't. Um, I couldn't find anything on my local repeaters, so I'll just... It's picking up the local radio stations on FM. So that's good. Took me a little while to figure out how to program it. So uh, let's see. 96 megahertz. More, more, more. Enter. Yeah, there we go. Yep. That's working well, so uh, that's that little job done. What I've noticed is it does seem that these wet capacitors could do with a, a long charge when they're first used. I don't know if that's to sort of reform them or get them going. And then afterwards, you know, just a half an hour charge seemed enough to uh, give it a good charge to last uh, several days, so that's uh, good anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've gabbled on enough.